Happy Super Bowl Sunday, February the 12th, 2023. In this video, we're going to be talking about the midweek winter storm that could bring quite a bit of severe weather for the Deep South and heavy snowfall and colder temperatures for the northern tier. And following that, we are going to be looking at our crazy temperatures that are anticipated also for the middle of this upcoming work week. Now, if you are new to the YouTube channel and you really like these detailed weather videos and updates, please consider subscribing right now as it helps out the YouTube channel grow with success and also leave a like and also share this video with your family and friends on social media. It really, really, truly helps out a lot, folks, because at the end of the day, I am here uploading on an everyday basis for you all in the afternoon as we are keeping an eye on the weather pattern ahead. So here's a quick check at those Super Bowl weather alerts going on right now. So if you're staying home watching the Super Bowl, some areas gonna see some rough weather while others gonna see some quiet weather. And where it's active right now is where we have most of the weather alerts. We have high wind watches and high wind warnings over New Mexico and northern portion of Texas. There's also high wind warnings and watches over California and Nevada with wind advisories and freeze watches over much of California. Winter storm advisories and winter storm warnings are already out for Washington and Oregon and for Northern California, part of that weather system. And then if you are traveling back east, for the next couple of days, it looks pretty good. Other than there is winter storm warnings over the Appalachians, including for West Virginia and the western sliver of the state of West or the state of Virginia, in other, in other words, so you guys don't get confused. And then, of course, there is wind advisories issued for Florida, part of some strong northerly winds. Also, here's a detailed look at the latest Doppler radar on that weekend storm system that we're monitoring right now across the eastern seaboard. We got some moderate to heavy rainfall that is falling right now across portions of Virginia, like Roanoke. We're seeing some light to moderate rainfall. If you're in Washington, we got some light to moderate rainfall. No sort of any freezing rain or wintry, wintry precipitation at the moment. We are seeing a couple of speckles and returns of some pink there, but that's probably a little overestimated at this given time. Georgetown and Delaware seeing some convective showers rolling on through, but otherwise not too bad there. And then when we take a look at Virginia Beach, where we're seeing a couple of showers and maybe a clap or two of thunder, part of that low pressure system that is circulating around the area. And then further south here near Wilmington in North Carolina and Jacksonville, Kitty Hawk getting some passing showers at this time from the southwesterly direction rotating around this upper level low pressure system and surface low over North Carolina. Now when we take a look at the latest GFS model for Super Bowl Sunday here Definitely a stormy one if you're in Virginia, if you're in North Carolina, like we talked about. Some of the showers, some of the storms rotating around that surface low. But speaking of GFS model, there has been some model rendering issues this afternoon. So you're only going to see a few days of weather on your screen. And we're going to have to look at the European model instead. Because the GFS model is having some rendering problems on the 18Z model outputs this afternoon. Probably due to a solar storm that has recently impacted weather satellites. But otherwise, right now, uh, speaking of space weather on the quiet side, we're looking at some um, quiet weather across much of the U.S., except for the eastern seaboard for your Super Bowl Sunday. By Monday, for your morning commute, looking pretty good, but there's a weather system that is going to be developing out of the desert southwest here by Monday afternoon and Monday evening. As you can see here, on February the 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have dry weather. But look at what we got. Another weather system is going to be developing. This includes for Central Texas. This includes for New Mexico. We have some showers, some thunderstorms. Yes, some forcing for that to occur and some instability too. We got some snow for the higher elevations. And this is really going to transit into a very powerful um, high plains cyclone. We got 986 millibars on the leeward side of the Rockies. So this is your classic Colorado Rocky surface low that develops. And to the south of that, look at those winds, those isobars tightly packed. 
that indicates we're going to see some strong winds, winds 20 to 30 miles an hour, maybe gusts up to 40 and 50 miles an hour. But look at this, to the east here, by Tuesday, we have that severe weather potentially, probably only a marginal to slight risk at the very most. Not talking the big day on Tuesday. That will come on Wednesday. But instead, look at the rainfall all the way from Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, eastern Texas, over the Red River, as well as Oklahoma, Kansas, in and out of moderate to heavy rainfall and some breezy to strong winds that are anticipated. Not to mention some breezy and strong winds anticipated also across California and Nevada as the surface flow intensifies throughout the day on Tuesday. By Tuesday afternoon, that surface slow moves into the northern plains, and yes, this time it's not going to be all snow. It's going to be a lot of rain instead over uh, Iowa, over um, portions thereof, or most of Wisconsin, over central and southern Minnesota. You're looking at moderate to heavy rainfall, surface low 985 millibars. You got the cold front that is going to be sweeping across Illinois and Indiana. Again, limited instability and moisture advection with this one for Tuesday. So we're not really looking at a big, monstrous, severe weather event on Tuesday. But again, don't uh, don't quote me on that might be a marginal maybe a slight risk but it's not really being highlighted on the spc for the time being okay so that system moves out on wednesday morning on the 15th of february by the way valentine's day looks pretty good too for the most part almost forgot that all right so if you're doing anything for valentine's day looks a-okay for your tuesday all right nothing to worry about unless you are in this storm system for Tuesday morning and Tuesday afternoon, you can see some inclement weather. If you're in Florida, it looks pretty good for your Valentine's Day anyways. Now, by Wednesday, that's going to be the big storm. That's the monster that everyone's talking about. And I mean, it's going all over on my Discord server. A lot of weather YouTubers are saying that this is going to be one of the worst severe weather outbreaks so far this season. In my honest opinion, there is not enough concrete model data to prove that, but I will tell you, we're going to have severe weather either way you put it. It's going to be an enhanced risk. It just might stay slight. I've seen slight risks at day seven, and they stay slight risk at day one or day two, right? So just because we have a slight risk for Wednesday and Thursday does not mean that, oh, it's going to be a big severe weather event doesn't mean that okay so just to clear things up for you all that are just wondering that oh my gosh this is going to be a mega severe weather event on wednesday in my honest opinion i don't think it's going to be but nevertheless we do have to keep an eye on models the reasoning behind this is the latest gfs the global model has really far in between of discrete storms here and they do not look particularly intense and just to let you all know, the GFS model doesn't do the best at modeling this very well, but what it does do a good job as is showing a broader warm sector over the deep south, over Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Tennessee, Arkansas, and even um, eastern Texas near the Red River is where we might see some isolated to scattered thunderstorms. This would really only warrant a slight risk for this point. I do not see them going for 30%, okay? So I want to make that clear with you all. I do not see an enhanced risk for severe weather just yet for day three when their day three outlook comes out. There's just not enough uh, model consistency and confidence to warrant that. Now, even so, my confidence meter up above is pointing to a 9 right now. That's just the overall weather pattern, okay? I want to make that clear with you all. This is not a particular storm. This is not a particular snow event or severe weather event. This is just the broader synoptic scale. All the, Anything you see on the map is is uh, warrant a 9 on the confidence meter. Now, particularly when it comes to severe weather, for Wednesday, right now there's medium to high confidence, maybe a six and a seven on the severe weather confidence meter right now, maybe even lower than that. There's just not enough to uh, prove a enhanced risk at this point or even a moderate risk. There's just not enough instability that is going to warrant that for right now. There will be some 500, maybe a thousand joules per kilogram, but it's it's murky right now. 
okay, on the numerical guidance. And besides that, we haven't gone all the way through the GFS model here. This is the furthest we can go out again because the GFS is having significant rendering problems. They are running way behind schedule. Um, last I checked, they were only at hour 100 when I was um, in the process of making this PowerPoint. So it is really running behind schedule and I don't have time to wait that long for that model data to come out because it could take another hour and a half to two hours. And by the time this is out to you all, it's gonna be pretty late. I wanna get these videos out as early as I can, but at the same time, keep it more accurate and professional at the same time. The only model data that we have that is completely ran through is a European model, and that is the latest 12Z output um, as of this um, as of um, today. So we can see here on the European model, we can see that system is going to be moving out, and then by the time we go into um, yeah, so this is. Uh, 60 hours out uh, by Tuesday night. You can see there is your system. Develops really nicely. There is your surface load, 986 millibars um, that we were talking about. The European model does a pretty good job at that, and then that surface low moves all the way out. And then we got another surface low that moves on through by Thursday morning. And this again, you can see why there is a mixed signal here. The GFS has lesser convective um, um, probabilities versus the latest European model has more of a linear line that would only warrant probably a slight risk for severe weather, more of a 15 sig for damaging winds at the very most as what I would put. And I would probably keep this at most maybe a 2 to 5% chance of tornadoes at this time. However, maybe further north, like say Tennessee, maybe for northern portion here of say uh Mississippi and Alabama, maybe a, a locally higher threat for tornadoes may exist. But again, that really all depends on this surface low on how this all pans out. So in five days by Friday morning, that surface low is out of here and things tend to dry out later on in the period. All right, there it goes. There it goes, my origami bird. Tweet, tweet. So by day four, speaking of severe weather, there is a 15% chance for severe weather again. Again, they're not going 30, and there's a reasoning for that, right? For northeastern Texas, for northern Louisiana, for Arkansas, southeastern uh, Oklahoma, northeastern portion there, and northwestern Mississippi and western Tennessee under that 15% chance for severe weather. And for day five, that would be for Thursday through Friday, we do got a slight risk for severe weather up in the Ohio Valley into the Indiana region, to the south there, into Kentucky, Tennessee, and the Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia region. But just because we have a big, broad area of a 15% chance for severe weather does not mean that, oh, there's going to be a moderate risk. Looks like Thursday is going to be the worst day. We've got to understand a few things that this is probably going to be more linear, so more of a slight risk for severe weather on Thursday. If you want to pick any day for severe weather, if you want to storm chase, if you want to go live, I'm going live. I'm probably going to pick Wednesday out of the week to go live because I think the dynamics will be slightly better for maybe tornadoes. Again, some of them could be a little more intense like an EF1. I'm not going to pre-rate, but you get the idea. Better chances for tornadoes on Wednesday than on Thursday. But nevertheless, we could still have tornadoes on Thursday uh, with strong damaging winds and maybe some large hail. But again, the biggest day probably going to be on Wednesday. That would be the day to really watch closely for. But otherwise, on either side of that looks um, pretty chill for the most part. For day two, as far as your daytime highs, yeah, things are warming up. They're going to get warmer before they get cooler. For Monday, your daytime highs looking warm. Temperatures in the 60s as far north as, um, say, Kansas, Missouri, into um, Indiana. 54 degrees in Indianapolis on Monday. Further south, temperatures in the upper 60s to low 70s. 
but it warms up even further on Tuesday, the 13th on Valentine's Day. Going to be really warm there, close to 80 degree temperatures in Houston and Corpus Christi, Texas. If you're headed further south, like in Florida, if you're headed towards Mobile, temperatures in the upper, uh, upper 60s to low 70s, maybe even some upper 70s to low 80s in Florida. But it doesn't end there. It's going to even warm up more on Wednesday. Look at this. We got temperatures in the 70s, even some mid-60s in Indianapolis and Indiana. Look at this. Even 60 degrees in Detroit, 68 degrees in Columbus, Ohio. But if you want it warmer, go down towards the McAllen Air Force Base here in southern Texas, Corpus Christi, and... Houston hovering and flirting in the upper 70s to lower 80s, even some upper 80s down there in southernmost Texas with mid to upper 80s in Florida. So some very warm weather. You're going to love it. You're going to love this week very much. But if you don't like the warm, go to the northern tier where it's going to be 15 and 25 degrees above zero. Yeah, big temperature swing. And that's kind of what one of the key points of this video were. And then by Thursday, still very warm for the southeast, for the upper Midwest and the northeast, while it is going to be downright frigid. 7 degrees in Fargo, 10 degrees just to the south there in North Dakota and Minnesota. Yeah, that is really cold for Thursday during the day. So yeah, just because it's warm further south doesn't mean it's going to be very warm further north. Your temperature anomalies for your Monday do indicate it's going to be warmer than average. 10 to 20 degree temperatures above normal for much of the uh, upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Deep South. That continues all the way into Tuesday. Look at this. Temperatures 10 to 20 degrees above normal. Getting close to 30 degrees above normal. If you're in Ontario and Quebec, Canada, very warm up there for this time of the year. You're going to love it. If you're back west, temperatures 15 to 25 degrees below normal. So definitely some colder weather on the way. And that's going to slosh eastward. Look at this. By Wednesday, 30 degree temperatures above normal over Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and New York. Yeah, you're not going to complain about how cold it's going to be. It's going to be more than just uh, warm. It's going to be pretty warm. Uh, uh, winter heat wave, we can call it, with temperatures 25 to 30 degrees below normal on your Wednesday and Thursday. And that continues. And then look at this. Whole flip to the pattern by Friday. Temperatures are going to go the other direction. 10 to 20 degrees below normal for your to end the work week. So, well, that's going to sum it up for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this video so much, folks. You guys really mean a lot to me. If you all want to stay tuned for the work that I do, um, I try my best at making these videos as accurate as possible. I'm really trying to stay away from the hype button at this time. So thank you all for watching. Again, we reviewed our weekend storm system that is still continuing to move across the region. And then, of course, we're keeping an eye on next week's storm and those temp too for the region and of course i sure hope you all enjoy your super bowl sunday have a party don't get drunk do not throw rocks that's kind of a joke that i like to tell you all once once i was a kid that's what my dad told me don't throw rocks stay out of trouble double trouble is no fun all right i'll see you guys back here tomorrow with another update on the weather